Since becoming president, Joe Biden has wasted no time in provoking our rivals around the world. He upset Russian President Vladimir Putin by calling him a killer. And then additionally, Chinese officials roughed up our secretary of state at their first face-to-face -face meeting last week. And then North Korea won't even pick up the phone to answer Biden's calls. So is Biden's foreign policy agenda hurting America. Joining us to discuss is Vice President of National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation, Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano. Thank you so much for joining us. Always great to have you. Good to be with you. So what do you make, just an overall uh, picture of what's happening uh, with the Biden administration when it comes to foreign policy right now? Sure. Well, th there's, there's no question Iran, North Korea, Russia, and China that they're all testing and probing the president. This is understandable often happens with new presidents, particularly understandable here. The administration came in off. It's clear that, that they actually don't have a, a specific plan for any of these other than saying, well, we're not going to be Trump. Uh, and I think look at what's going on in the border crisis right now. And I think they must be paying particular attention to that, that the president is, is distracted and, and apparently disengaged. Um, they've implemented a policy which which follows their, their ideology, their agenda. And then the facts on the ground have been disastrous and they almost refuse to acknowledge them. And they seem more obsessive about covering up their own failures than in addressing the problems. So if you're a bad guy and you're testing the Biden administration, you add those three things up and you say, well, this is a formula to probe to see how, how really these guys react in, in crisis. So I, I do think it's a bit of a cause for concern. Do you have any feeling as uh, what the... A Biden agenda in foreign policy would be? Uh, and is it clear to everyone that works below him so that they can carry it out? I, I think that there's kind of three brains going on in the Biden camp, and I'm not really sure which one is going to own foreign policy. A lot of the individuals in this administration are people that served in the Obama administration, and it's very clear that their, their idea is, we'll just go back and did what we did before Trump got here. Um, then there's an incredibly radical wing of this party, which has some really, really ideas that are outside the mainstream. Like, what's the problem with Iran? And, and just turn the Middle East over to the Muslim Brotherhood. I, we don't see a problem with that. And, you know, China's ideology, we, we actually kind of like China's ideology. So, And then there's <laughs> the, the president himself, who has a kind of a record of wanting to sit down and kind of be very deliberative and kind of think these things through and, and, and is actually fair, fairly risk-averse. And it's not clear to me who's going to win that battle. What is clear to me is on all the big issues, North Korea, Russia, China, Iran, global terrorism, they came into office without a plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what it looks like. They also seem to have, or some have argued, the opposite stance when it comes to pulling our troops out of what they call forever wars. What did right. you make of the Secretary of Defense's uh, surprise trip to Afghanistan? Well, I've always believed that that a stable Afghanistan is important in the United States, makes South Asia stable. That's important. We need India to be stable, so they're, they're, they help out with China. So I've always thought that the conditions, our troop levels and our actions in Afghanistan have to be driven by conditions at the ground. But, but, but writ largely, what's really, really interesting, and nobody's really talked about this at all, is if you look closely, where the Biden administration has basically followed closely to Trump's foreign policy, even if they didn't call it Trump's foreign policy, they're kind of doing okay. In the areas where they have most radically departed from that, like border and immigration and the Middle East, that's where they've had the most trouble. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Carfano. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.